Singapore, the jewel of the Far East. Located just south of Malaysia, this tiny island state has a population of over three million. Founded by Englishman Stamford Raffles in 1819, Singapore today still has many throwbacks to its colonial past. The economy, overseen by British businessmen, went from strength to strength, until now the country has the highest standard of living anywhere in the Far East. For the rest of the world, Singapore has become a shining example of prosperity and integrity in the international arena. That was until a modern expat arrived. For the British expat, living and working in Singapore is like having a license to thrill 24-7. It's fun and games all the way. But it seems there could be a price to pay if you stay for too long. You'd end up like some of the characters we met, like, lost it big time. I think two, three years maximum. Otherwise, you start losing your perspective of life. Yeah? Yeah. And um... you, you start, you, you don't understand what to do. I mean, we eat in five star hotels every, every evening. We, you know, it's crazy. We fly around everywhere, you know, jet set life like you can't believe. And yet, I really got to think, well, you know, I can do this forever or I have to go back and, you know, try and enter the normality again. Corin is one of the 60,000 expats that has come to Singapore to make his fortune. He came over on one of his company's lucrative overseas packages and has a range of benefits that ensure him a comfortable lifestyle. Here in Singapore, you're on holiday all the time, non-stop. Go out every night like you would go out in Ibiza or Greece or wherever. Every night's the same. It's a party, it's a life, but it's just one big holiday. Well, you have two choices in life, don't you? You either go out or you stay at home. If you stay at home, you'll never see the world. And you can go out very easily, just turn up to somewhere like this, get a very well-paid job, fly around the region, get paid loads of money to do it, have the time of your life, or you stay at home and sit on the M25 for two hours every morning. The choice is yours. Hi, oh, Eddie. This is on top of my building where I work. Sometimes I pop up here for a bit of sunbathing, a bit of the old... Anyway, I thought I'd show you a little bit of Singapore, because we can see most of it from here. Remember, it's only the size of the Isle of Wight. So, start over here, Apple's Place, and behind it, Sentosa. So that's actually how close the beach is, is there. There's the largest port in the world, and that's where the sort of expats live over there in the nice areas, and there's sort of uh, nice condominiums and everything. And then, in contrast, if you look over here, all these council houses and everything, that's where the sort of Chinese yeah, locals live, in the shit areas over here. And this is like Chinatown and uh, Little India and all that bollocks. Don't come too close to the edge. Oh, careful. You're not supposed to come up here, by the way, so don't actually tell anyone I brought you up here, because it's, like, a bit dangerous and everything, but never mind, we don't listen to the rules as usual. I mean, this is Singapore. We're on the top of the world here. I'm the king of the world! Needless to say, the king of the world doesn't live in one of the shit areas of town. The benefits that Corin's company provides ensure that he's able to live a life that would be way beyond his means back in Britain. But not everyone has it so easy in Singapore. Gemma has recently arrived with her two small children to live with her mother. The reason I moved out here was I was still, what I thought, happily married. So I came out here when he got sent to Cyprus on tour because he's in the British Army. Um, but I, I think he found somebody else over in Cyprus, but I have no proof. But he decided that he didn't want to come out here, he wants to stay in England and earn 
pittance and have a single life. So I've come out here to raise the two little babies on my own, well, with mum's help. So I'm glad I'm here, definitely. Gemma's dad wasn't adverse to the odd away fixture either. Originally I came out here with my husband's work. <laughs> After three and a half months, he went to work in China and he met somebody else. And, and when did you first find out that he was having an affair? He got headhunted by an American company that took him to China and he had to stay there for 10 days. And when he came back, I knew he'd got somebody else. I, I've got probably six friends whose husbands have done exactly the same. And I, I really don't know. I could say perhaps they're better at sex. I don't know. Are you ever going back to England? Not to live, no. Got nothing. I mean, I've got plenty of friends there, but that's not enough to take me home. I've got a family there as well, but my most important family is in Asia. So I'm going to stay here. Singapore is home to the world's largest port. Paul Baragwanath runs his own ship repair company and earns a very tasty income. I wouldn't say it was everyone's cup of tea, but it definitely is my cup. I've been now in Singapore 17 years and I must admit, love every minute of it. You've always managed to keep yourself rather young, free and single, haven't you? Why buy a cow when milk is so readily available? A lot of the Asians find us European men very attractive and we find them very attractive. You know, we have a mutual understanding. The combination goes very well. They just like to please and be pleased. Well, you know, the nice thing about Asian women, you know, they're so, they're so petite that, you know, you can just throw them up, spin them round and uh, put them down. Whereas I find, I must admit, and I haven't done it for a while, you know, with a, a European or an expat uh, woman, you know, you have to sort of position them uh, <laughs> and, then take it, and then take it from there. <laughs> yeah. I hope I'm not being too derogatory to the European women, but uh, I've just been bitten by yellow fever and... Uh, just that you find expat women bigger boned? Uh, bigger everything. What, what, my, what, what do, I, do I call this fond memories? <laughs> you call <laughs> whatever you want. This was Suriana. I saw her for a little while. Oh, where's that crumb? Hang on, let's go. Blah, 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 blah. This was a fancy dress party we went to. This is, uh, this is Selena. Very fond memories. This is some of the girls at the uh, New Year's Eve party. Do you know a lot of them there? I know all of them. This is Maybelline, very nice Singaporean girl. Sarah at Christmas time. How long did you go out with her for? Six months or something, yeah. Up until the expiry date. This is Ratna, she was actually Indonesian. Had some good fun with her. This is Linda. How long did you see her for? About six months. Is that the old sell-by date again? Uh, <laughs> you could say that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I should really categorise these. There are a lot of pictures there. Although Singapore seems to be a playground for some, it is still a country run by a strict code of discipline. Any infringement of the law is dealt with heavy-handedly, and long jail sentences and caning are commonplace for the most trivial of crimes. The King of Singapore is an expert commentator on the dangers. Elvis Wee is the owner of a popular expat bar in the heart of the metropolis. You'll be surprised that you might be charged for things you can do in your country. You cannot do it here. There are simple things like uh, you're not allowed to chew gums, all right? You're not allowed to throw your secret butts on the streets, all right? Uh, you must flush your loo when you, after you use it. Uh, you cannot jaywalk. What does caning actually mean? I mean, I think people in England would think they're reminded of uh, Tom Brown's school days, when, you know, the headmaster gives a, the pupil a quick cane. What's it, is that what it's like out here? No, you think what? They take a ruler and, and slap your hand. Yeah, right. They strap your hand up, spread out your legs, you're naked, they get a professional caner to whip your bums. Jesus Christ, you cannot sit forever. It hurts every time you sit and it splits. It splits your flesh. Really? Yes. Corin, the man who appears to have everything, is getting ready to go out on the pool. There's the bed. That's where uh, action happens. There's the uh, 
such as seduction music, dolphins and all that. Here's the clothing, the t-shirt, the trousers. What's in the book? Some pickies. My former, former job. So you're, you're a model? I was. I'll show you where the maid lives. She will be living. I'm going to interview her next week. This is her room here. Apparently it's big enough, but it's quite small. I mean, I can probably read both, both walls. Anyway, I'll keep her happy. Oh, yeah. And also, here's the lab. They have to have one without a basin, because uh, it's the way they are. They like crouching on the floor. We'll get them from the jungle. Right, I'm going to get ready now. I can see this week that I haven't pulled many uh, locals with him. So there's only blonde hairs in plug holes. <laughs> That's how I can tell. So sometimes I'll say, okay, so let's do a check at the end of the week. If there's lots of dark hairs in the blood hole, then that means I've had a local week. If there's lots of blonde hairs, then I've had a, like a spot-on week. <laughs> lots of blonde hairs in it this week, which means it's gone yellow. Not yellow, it's gone, it's gone blondy. Yellow is the, the, the yellow ones, with black hair and chopsticks. And go, Hoah! every time you get your cock out, bye. In Singapore, when the sun goes down, the day for the expats is only just beginning. All around town, in exclusively white bars, the expats begin to party. Corin's first stop is a Singaporean birthday party. It all seems pretty unremarkable except for the fact that it only takes Corin a few minutes to score before he quickly moves on. This is a big secret. Now, the girl whose party it was, or whose birthday it was, is actually uh, transsexual. She uh, had a sex change three or four months ago. She went to Bangkok, and in Bangkok, it, it's a special transsexual change because uh, they actually make the change, but it's actually uh, their insides are deeper. Because in Singapore, the change is only six inches, and in Bangkok, it's eight inches. And apparently, her German boyfriend, who you saw earlier, doesn't actually know that she's had a sex change. Because she's only just met him. And they slept together, and yet uh, he, he doesn't know anything, so it must be a good one. So he doesn't know the fact that she used to be a man? She doesn't know. And I've seen a lot of that happen. And luckily it hasn't happened to me yet. How do you know? Because I know. Corin's next stop is a favourite haunt, where he knows all the women are truly women. Corin reckons this is the ideal place to pull, as it's full of air stewardesses on stopovers. This nocturnal activity could, in fact, get Corin caned or even thrown in jail. You're not supposed to do this, you know, in Singapore. But Corin doesn't even stop there. Next, a little jaywalking. Again, instant arrest is spotted. Are you sure you're safe to drive? Corin's night out comes to an end at four in the morning. He will have less than four hours sleep before he's back up and running. The next day, Gemma is preparing herself for yet another job interview. Gemma has been to several meetings, but so far has been unsuccessful. And without any formal qualifications, she's finding the going tough. If I don't get the work permit soon, then I'm going to have to take the girls back to England, and I don't really want to do that. There's nothing there for us anymore. For Gemma, time is running out. If this interview doesn't go well, her new life in Singapore could be over before it even began.
the Orchid Country Club is home to one of the world's most idyllic golf courses. Golf in Singapore is an important pastime, and membership to the top clubs costs well over $100,000. Like at home, big business is conducted on the golf course, and Corin is his firm's public face. Today, he's supposed to be wooing some very important clients. Corin has already taken an instant dislike to one of the players and has nicknamed him Paddington because he thinks he looks like the bear. Paddy? Paddington? Yeah? What was your number? Six. Six? Son of the devil. It's just there, where the people are there. Unfortunately, for the gentleman concerned, he is also completely useless at golf and so makes an easy target for Corin. Oh. It's not his day. Oh, a little bit off. For Singaporeans, a lot of pride and honour is at stake in a golf game, and they are sticklers for keeping to the rules. Corin shows his usual respect for local sensibilities. You in the rough, Cogs? Huh? You in the rough? I don't mean in the middle of the fairway. Might be, I'll do the old thing. <laughs> <laughs> Can't find the ball. Did you see my ball? Oh, look, there it is. Just landed in there. What the hell is it doing in there? Look. Oh, look. Oh, dear. So blind, couldn't see it. Sorry. Hey, <laughs> you're. Did it hit you or not? Ah. Colossi. How many women have you slept with, do you reckon, in total? Ever? Yeah. Um, I'm up to now 17. Yeah. In all seriousness, because I know that. <laughs> it's true. For the past week, you've slept with eight. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> That's seventeen hundred. That's not true, Eddie. Really. Okay, I'm bored now. I must finish. I'm at home. A bit of sleep. So go back. Just drive off. You're just on the tenth hole, though. Yeah. Never mind. Lord. What was that? We just go home now. Well, I've had enough of heat and golf balls and Chinamen and all that stuff. I'm so fucking bored. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I'm just going to drive. Damn it. Gemma's interview is with someone called the Big Man, a powerful expat who seems to know everyone. So what can you do? Um, any type of office work. I haven't actually physically got the grades to show that I can do it, but I've been doing it since I was 17. Have you ever done anything with sales and sort of going out of an office environment and meeting people? <laughs> I used to work for Anne Summers. I used to do the parties around at ladies' oh, houses. Really? Yes. Keep your chin up. <laughs> something, will, something will come up. Gemma wants to forget the stresses of her job interview and goes to Carnegie's, one of the biggest expat bars in town. Wednesday night is ladies' night, where all the women get free champagne. It's a place where most men want to be. So naturally, Corin is there too, and soon finds a willing contributor to his shower plug hole. Paul Baraguana is also in full swing, and shows us just how he got his nickname, Hot Lips. At the end of the night, Corin takes the nipple liquor home to show her the delights of Club Street. Next day, Corin describes how sex with an Eastern woman is totally different from sex with a Western one. Uh, well, you can basically pick them up, throw them about a bit. They're very tiny. You can pick them up with one hand. Yeah. Really? Yeah, because uh, the bum is in one, one hand. Often. And that's quite, you know. And they can be very athletic above you. If I go flip, 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 it's great, yeah. But I can't do any talking about it afterwards, you know. How is it for you? I don't know. Uh, do you want a cup of tea? Do you want to have? I understand this all. 
So it's kind of a bit boring after that. Later on, Corin experiences yet more forbidden pleasures. His maid arrives. In Singapore, if there are complaints, your neighbour complains, you're walking around, even in your own house, naked. You know, you're seen through the windows, naked. Neighbours complain, the police will come knocking at the door. On Sunday mornings, Corin has his maid clean his apartment in a very unusual fashion. Why are you uh, doing the cleaning naked? Uh, because Corin likes me to. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Does anyone else make you do it uh, naked or not? No, only Corin. Only Corin? Yeah. She's very happy. Yeah? Very happy. Yeah. Great. That's a relief. Yeah. She's, uh, she loved doing it, aren't it? It's, it's great. Typical example of happiness out here. Very, everybody's just cool and, you know, no problems, you know. Sunday morning is very cool and just quiet moments. So Sundays are pretty much like they are in uh, England? Yeah, very much. Very similar, really. What's it like for the expat out here? Um, I think you'll find that it's, uh, most of them are uh, pretty messed up in the head. Yeah? Yeah. Why, what? I think um, they lose their sense of perspective about what is right and what is wrong. So, Cogs, why is um, your mate naked in the background doing the ironing? She uh, works for me on at the weekends, and because um, she likes to go out and party in the discos and everything in the afternoon, she comes all dressed up, ready to go. But because she doesn't want to do her ironing and all the chores in her, in her going out clothes, she comes over gets uh, changed, and she was walking around in her underwear one day, and I thought, well, you, you, you know, might as well take it all off. She's happy, you know, and I'm happy, because I, you know. Something nice to look at. Yeah, she's, she's very pretty, and it's, you know, it's just, you know, it improves my mood for the rest of the day. <laughs> when she takes off, you start to from when she goes. Elsewhere in the city, rehearsals are taking place for an international beauty contest. Let's get changed. Go back. Miss UK has made the final, and although there's less than six hours to go, there's still a lot of work needed before the show will be ready. USA, nice bottom. Paul is going for a spin in his luxury convertible Merc. The good Lord was uh, very kind. You know, he gave me quite pleasant features, a great personality, <laughs> and drop dead gorgeous blue eyes. What more do you want? No, exactly. Uh, it does no harm when they see a nice black Mercedes Sports. I must admit, I, I sometimes call it a good leg opener. <laughs> so, uh, tell me about the, the cost, because cars out here are phenomenally expensive, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They're, in fact, on ratio aspects, they're about uh, uh, three to one. You buy one here and you can buy three in, uh, in the UK. Why are you staying single? Are you waiting for Mrs Wright, or are you always going to be the... the you know, the most eligible bachelor in town for the rest of your life. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't know about eligible bachelor, but I'm just not ready for that, uh, that big commitment. No, I think, uh, the problem is, I think if I got married today, I'd be divorced in, uh, in a year's time because uh, I still have wandering eyes and I'm just not ready for that big commitment. Um, because I must admit, uh, when I do, when I do decide to get married, uh, uh, you know, it won't be just for one or two years, it will be for the, the rest of my natural days. But at the moment, I'm enjoying the uh, footloose, fancy free. The problem is, the older I get, I think the more harder it's going to be to actually just uh, settle down and be content with the uh, typical family way of life. But uh, only time will tell. As darkness envelops Singapore, the neon lights draw out the expats from their condos. Gemma is getting ready for a heavy night out on the tiles. Well, I'm actually just waiting for Harley, door bitch, um, to finish work. She works just down there in Amoeba, on the door. Waiting for her to finish so we can go out and get pissed, basically. Gemma and Harley go to the Mitre, definitely the worst hotel and illegal drinking den in Singapore. It's a dump, but it's got cheap booze. I can't even see anything. It's very dark. Very dark, very dingy. There's stories that it's haunted, but I don't know whether it is or not. This is safe here, right, is it? 
Yeah, safe as houses. I'd like a vodka and coke. They settle in and quickly order the drinks, while one of Gemma's friends takes us to see the hotel residence loo. The toilet you've really got to look out for. That way. Oh my. Oh my God. Oh, oh. I can hardly breathe. <laughs> Elsewhere in the city, other expats are grabbing a bite to eat at Newton Food Market. The people here are as often as strange and diverse as the food on the menu. Shelley and Anne have been here for several hours. Do you want a full on no, one with a camera? No. Oh my God, yeah. I'm not shy. Is that good for the camera? Can I say to my mum, can I say, do you want to see my tits? Can I show you my tits? Mmm! That is Have how you you're seen it? I'm sorry, you've seen it. Don't show your tits. I can't show you my tits. She gets jealous, you see. Away from the food market, Corinne is about to meet some women from a different league altogether. The winners are announced at the beauty pageant, and Corinne has arrived just in time for the models party. It seems that he's already pulled Miss Singapore. The girl that is Miss Singapore has just announced that she wants to be my girlfriend. I have to tell her I, I will, because you know, obviously it means a shag at some stage along, along the line. Are you going to try and get her back tonight? No, uh, I think we'll go for uh, something tall and slender that is uh, obviously wanting to celebrate. I need to take her clothes off to actually find out whether she actually really is the best. He makes a beeline straight for the winner, leaving Miss Singapore on hold. Meanwhile, away from the glamour of the model party, some more hapless victims emerge from the loo. One of the mitre's old hands explains why a place like this is still in existence. Is this one of the hottest bars in town? Uh, well, yes, please! Well, this is one of the hottest beers in town, because the boss is so cheap he won't turn the fridge up. But, uh, <laughs> apart from that, uh, it's one of the hottest, but you can get, it. You can get what you want here. <laughs> Shelley, Shelley. Back at the food market, Shelley is still showing typical British reserve. I want his trousers. C can I go and pull his skirt up and you'll film it? Go on in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At the model party, Corin is undeterred from the winner's brush-off and mounts his offensive on Miss UK. Again unsuccessful, he then goes for Miss Greece, but soon gets his hand slapped. Miss USA doesn't seem impressed either, so he returns for a second attempt at the winner, who seems to be a little more receptive. But he doesn't get anywhere, so, his luck out, Corin soon returns to what he calls his guaranteed shag, Miss Singapore. Corin, like Paul, is obviously a big hit with local Eastern girls, but for some reason, he doesn't seem to be able to score with the Western women. The following day, Corin's at a local bike shop where his bike's been booked in. I say, hello, hello, can fix bike, can fix bike. And they say, oh, can, can, can. That's it. They don't understand, poor guys, they don't understand much. But they know how to fix bikes, which is the main thing. Uh, a mad Chinese woman decided to attack my bike. And uh, as you can see, that's a total trash job, and I'm completely lost without my bike. That's the price you've got to pay for love, or not love, as that case may be, in that, in that particular instance. So, Cox, what made a trash your bike? Well, I had to say no, really, so, you know, and, and the Asian women out here just don't say no for an answer. I mean, it's really uh, crazy. At home, if you, if you say, look, I'm not interested, you know, we've been out a few times and that's it, OK, they walk away. But the Asian women are just fanatical. They keep on going, knocking at your door. She tried to knock my door down and, uh, I wouldn't let her in, so she went down and trashed her bike, so, you know, one of those things, really. But were you inside with anyone else at the time? Yeah, I was, yeah. Yeah, I was, yeah. I wouldn't let her in if I wasn't with someone else. I would have 
I was with someone else, and the other one was saying, who's that one knocking at the door? And, uh, you know, normal Saturday night antics. Then I had to get rid of the one that was in that inn as well, because I had the maids coming next, the next morning, so, you know, she wouldn't have liked it if the maids come, because the maids are a special, uh, special story altogether. I'm gutted about this, though. Paul is off to the yacht club to spend some time relaxing on his boat. What would you say your biggest extravagance is? I suppose my whole lifestyle can be classed as a little bit of extravagance. You know, you know, having the boat, you know, I like having all the toys that uh, most guys would like to have. I'm very lucky to have them. And this is my, uh, my pleasure boat. As you can see, my emblem, the, the lips, is on the bow and on the stern, better known as the Hot Lips. There's another name you called it. Some of my ex-girlfriends actually did phrase the boat as a bit like a floating whorehouse, but I disagree with that. <laughs> How many uh, girls have you had on board the boat? Oh, one or two. There again, I'd have to recharge my calculator to recount. This is the Admiral's, the, the, uh, the owner's cabin. The good old faith, we've had some fun. Paul's boat is nice, but not quite as impressive as one might have expected. And it's rather the same story at Corinne's office. It's 6.30 uh, now, 6.30 p.m., which means that London is about to wake up, sort of. And um, all the phones will start ringing soon. That's why we have to uh, shut down and uh, leg it off to um, <laughs> home. Uh, you don't want to be involved in any work or anything. Corinne and Paul seem mostly to score with local women. Their lifestyles obviously impress the average Singaporean. But do they impress Western women? The playboy reveals that he doesn't in fact have everything in life. I've got to tell you a sad story. Tanya. She lives next door. She's my ideal woman. Everything. Clever, pretty, witty. Takes me apart every, every two minutes, puts me in a place. Not many people can do that. One morning, I went to a little coffee shop to get my coffee, and the girl behind the counter said, you, someone's paid for your coffee. And I said, who? And she said, um... She said, oh, he's quite good looking. And I said, oh, OK, who? And she said, oh, he left his business card. So I took the card upstairs, took the coffee, and had his email address on, so I thought, I'll just send an email saying, cheers, thanks for the coffee, that was really nice. And then we emailed back and forth for a few months, and um, one day I think we bumped into each other in the elevator. That was our first sighting after months and months of emailing. So she is your template for the ideal woman? Yeah, she'd be the ideal one, I think. But you can have it, but anything. Slightly larger tits, though, because they're quite small. Right. Like, probably a lot larger, in fact, not just slightly larger. Because <laughs> I like to work on one at a time, not just, like, little fingertips. Personality-wise, though, sure. Yeah, 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 I've got all that as well. Does Corinne talk about Tanya all the time? Yeah, most of the time whenever we come down for a smoke break, and then he'll start asking me about, how's my princess? Uh, uh, I want to buy coffee for her, you know, I'll give you some money and then you buy some coffee for her. So what do you think you should do? Forget about her! <laughs> forget about her! But Corinne won't forget about her. His ideal is to have a relationship with this Western woman, and so he's splashed out by taking her for a meal at one of Singapore's top restaurants. If you're looking at expats, OK, who, who would you say is the worst? And the general Singaporeans might read the British the worst, all right? I would read the British are the biggest Party animals. Take my word for it. I would like to party the way the British party. Yeah? Yes. Every year, Paul holds another 40th birthday party. The collection of expensive cars in the drive shows that some of the richest people in Singapore are going to be there. You need a planner for the week. Yeah. My financial planner is color coded. No, I, I actually have to do our usual heart. Where's my usual heart? The theme of the party is if we can't drink it, eat it or shag it, we shouldn't really be here, right? Paul takes us on a guided tour around his house. He has spared no expense at making it a den of iniquity. There's nothing like having a few drinks 
Dom Perignon, of course. Look and the odd little petal in the bar. Like, who filled that up for you? I don't, one of my staff. And the, ni the nice thing about being rich and famous in Singapore, you know, you employ the best and you get the best service. Gemma has just received the news that she got her work permit and the job. She's going out with Harley to celebrate. Ah, uh, here we go, travelling style. Expat guys out here, they think, oh yeah, it's just the sex capital of the world. You can have plenty of one night stands. And the thing is, for us poor girls, we're not interested in one night stands. We want a nice, decent man to take care of us. And it just ain't happening because they want to have sex. Also, when you're here, you observe that, no offence to Singaporean girls, but they see a white man, they think, ooh la la. Even if all, he, yeah, even all if the he looks like a back, back of a bus, they think, oh yeah. All the Singaporean women out here, um, they get they with get expat home, men. They, they get with expat men because they want a better life. Corin is at Senso's, currently Singapore's most fashionable restaurant. He hopes that a romantic meal with Tanya will do the trick and persuade her to go out with him. Thank Merci. You. He said to me, that girl you're with, ah, oh, beautiful. The eyes are like emerald. <laughs> I was like, but emerald and not that colour. Ah, yes, but like that. And her arms are like baguette. Yeah, it's very nice, a little bit brown, uh, like a baguette. It's like, oh, typical yeah. Frenchman to say that. <laughs> it has a certain, I don't know what, to it. Je ne sais quoi. Yeah, what is it, in fact? Looks like um, a meat of some description, quite raw. That's going to worry me. Looks like my bell end. Oh, that is just disgusting. <laughs> You are so wrong. No, it wasn't really like that. Do not say anything disgusting to me while we eat. OK. Really, because I won't be able to eat. OK. Upon entering Paul's boudoir, we are met with a dazzling array of devices, each designed to ensnare a woman. His bed, which he calls a surgery table, is guarded by his formidable teddy bear while sexy ambient lighting is provided by a huge pair of red lips. Paul makes sure that his women are well looked after. On hand is some sexy bare-breasted lacy lingerie, but as Paul can't wait to show, his pièce de résistance, a well-worn rubber dildo. Meanwhile, at Senso's, things go from bad to worse. In my younger days, I was offered a job in a porn show. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Why, are you telling, why do you tell me these stories? Am I supposed to be impressed? Yeah. Mind the, uh, that's the... <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's Singaporean for you. Yeah. Fucking thick as shite. Um, Don't be obnoxious either. <clears throat> the atmosphere at Lush is a little more fun and Gemma is getting down to the serious business of celebrating. Luckily for the girls, they bump into a sweaty man who generously keeps buying them drinks all evening. It isn't long before all inhibitions drop away. There is actually a gap in the market for Western size condoms. That's a fascinating conversation to have over dinner. No, but there, there is mm. an actually a gap in the market for that thing. I don't believe you. It's true. I'll show you later. I've, you know. Yeah. But do you want, you know, a girlfriend? Because you act like you don't. No, I do. That would be my ideal. And I'm ready to do the old loving stuff as well. Are you? Yeah. But you're not going to meet her here. Well, I might do. It's time for Paul to blow out the candles and let the party begin. <laughs> 
which one of these lucky ladies will experience Paul's surgery table? OK, let's hear it one more time. Come on, for the first... Let's go to the bar, let's get wild, and let's get naked! Up, Blue Eyes. Can you stop calling me that? I like it. I hate it. It's like Frank Sinatra. You look like Frank Sinatra. You are such a complete wanker, you have no idea, do you? <laughs> Cheers. Strangers in the night, exchanging fluids. You are disgusting. You complete wanker. Mmm. Not an evening for the Playboy to remember. One can clearly see a little of Paul in Corin, but where will it all end? Will Corin finally become like a man who we found in the Garden of Eden? Alan, a poet, may have been out in paradise a little too long. You should hear my erotic shit. Jesus. Oh, yeah? Ladies ring me up, you know, they say, what you put on your email, it makes me wet. Oh, can you not give us any of that? Listen to this one. OK. Lo thunder and lightning. It's very erotic. I yeah. love it. Listen to this. While getting turned on by the sound of your sighs and making you wetter down your inner thighs, slippery and glistening and hidden beneath your loose tied sarong, I'd remove with my teeth and with a soft rustle let fall to the floor, revealing the curve which I'd simply adore, of your lovely vagina in panties of white, <gasps> provocatively clinging and beautifully white. Harley! That drunken scuttler over right there. <laughs> the girls are struggling to even get to the next club. They find a water temple and decide to practice their stone throwing. Now that Gemma has sorted out her future, at least in the short term, will she ever find a deep and meaningful relationship out here in Singapore? But does she really care? Maybe that's not what Singapore for Gemma is all about. Maybe she just wants to have a good time. And for that, Singapore is the ultimate destination. Let's go to Amoeba. Paul, of course, ended up with another local woman. He's long since given up wanting anything else. Paul is unlikely ever to go back to England. He seems to have found what he was looking for out here. At least, until he reaches this girl's sell-by date. You might get some people thinking, you know, look at that guy, you know, thinks he's God's gift. Well, then, for those type, well, just stay in the UK and uh, just go down to your local pub and, and plod on with your type of life, you know. It's horses for courses. It's uh, everyone to their own. But what about Alan? He could have lost his way before he came out to the Far East. Where does he feel things started to go awry? Were you this cheeky back in England? No. No? I was very shy and very conservative. And the cheekiness just came out when you uh, came to Singapore. I mean, so did you uh, move to Singapore? Did you go anywhere else before? Jakarta. Oh, uh, you went to Jakarta That's first. where it all happened. Ah, that's where it all happened. But that's where it all addled. You lost it there. And then here. I see. Next day, Tanya explains why the date with Corin seemed to go wrong from the start. Joelle, the girl that works at the coffee shop, comes outside and has a coffee with me most mornings. And um, we were talking about... I don't know why we are talking about it now. We were talking about the card thing. And she said, yeah, but he left a stack of cards for me to give out to any pretty girls that I saw. So what's that about? I just I was completely off him when I heard that. He took something quite sweet and turned it into something just horribly nasty and tacky, as he does. <laughs> I've pulled all, every stop out. I've thought about how and how to do it, and I can't. 
a lot of uh, chatting late at night and uh, listening to about the stories, talking about you know Brad Pitt and uh, George Clooney. Doesn't even work. Lots of that sort of thing. Lots of sensitive stuff. Normally works, but this time phew, can't do it. But I'm not attracted to the man in any way, shape, or form. So I'm not. I'm not the girl for the job. I'm not interested, and I don't want to know him. Corey's sweet and nice. But he's not cool, and he's so far from being cool, it's not funny. I'm becoming normal again. That's why I'm ready to go back. I mean, you've always got to go home from your holiday, haven't you? Otherwise, I'm never going to be able to cope with reality ever again. You know, you've got to get on. You've got to, you, have, you have your fun. I get to the point where I reach saturation in Singapore. But you've done everything now. I've done it all. Come on, then. Ah, oh, the day begins. But is he really going to go back to England? When Corin finally collects his motorbike from the repair shop, a magical transformation occurs. His failure with Tanya is quickly forgotten. It's back, it's back. Thank you for everybody for fixing my bag. The beast machine is about to get cleaned up and ready for, the, ready for a bit of yellow arse on the old back seat again. All right. For Corin, it seems, the sun still hasn't set on the British Empire. of um, bird pulling trophies. This is then the largest earring competition. <laughs> this one was in the back of the car. <laughs> That's because this one's particularly fishy. What's Corin's reputation in the office? Well, I think the MD thinks very highly of him. No, yeah. no. You can be honest. <laughs> can be honest? Yeah. <laughs> okay, he's full of bullshit. 